morning. It's the third day of competitions here in Nook and I got to the down to the water a bit early so I'm just sitting on top of the hill hanging out with Hans. Uh, <laughs> the event for today is the portage race so that's two laps of the short course with a portage with a carry in between and it's gonna probably be a real slog at the end but I felt pretty good doing the short race yesterday and we'll see how today goes. Men don't race until this afternoon, so I've got some time to just relax and enjoy the scenery and watch the tide go out. It's a really good, really good spot to watch. The teenage boys were the first to race for the day. Being able to portage a kayak quickly and efficiently is a traditional skill that a lot of people don't think about. These kayaks only weigh about 30 pounds about 15 kilograms, so they're pretty easy to throw on your head and carry. For a seal hunter, saving time by portaging over islands or fingers of a fjord to sneak up on prey, escape rough water, or shorten a long journey can mean the difference between a successful hunt or going home empty-handed. In competition, the style of the carry is important. The paddle must be stored in the cockpit and the kayak must be carried backwards with the stern leading the way. This is actually the easiest way to carry a kayak since they will often balance nicely on the mossy or thigh brace, which is resting on your shoulders. This takes the stress off your arms, and it is quite common to see a racer running with the kayak balancing and both arms pumping. The transitions between paddling and running and back to paddling were critical, and many close races were won by the person that can make the switch the fastest. The teenage girls were next. Due to the much more physical nature of the portage race, in general, many fewer people took part. The portage races are brutal. For the men's course, it was about a 5 kilometer loop, a 400 meter carry, another 5 kilometer loop, that 400 meter carry again, and then back in the water for a quick trip around the close buoy and across the finish line. Whereas the short distance races the day before had finished with celebration and cheers, the portage races were finished with more or less looks of relief and happiness to be done.
During the first portage, racers were often very close to each other, which made for very exciting spectating. But when the second lap came around, people had gotten spread out a little more, and you could tell just how tired everyone was. There was a lot less running and a lot more breathing hard. For the portage race especially, a celebratory role isn't about pleasing the crowd, it's about cooling off. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost as fast as the old guys. <laughs>